Hello, my name is Farah and I'm very happy to be here today to share my story with you. I'll be talking a little bit about myself, um, about my career journey, which has led to my current role as an R&D manager at Nokia. I'll also be telling you a little about our 5G Layer 1 software team and what we do there. And I'll tell you some of the lessons that I learned along the way. All right. So my journey with engineering started in Jordan, where I'm happy to have been born and lived until 2016. I did my bachelor's at a university called Sumeya University for Technology, and I chose the master, uh, the uh, major of communications engineering. Um, it was actually really luck that I ended up in that major or engineering in general. Um, as at that time, I really didn't know what it would mean to work in that field. I guess many of you would resonate with that, as that information is really not that available to us when we're starting our studies. Um, so I didn't have a particularly strong passion towards tech. I definitely didn't write code when I was five or ten years old, but I loved to learn. So I started um, university, and the more that I started to learn, the more that I started to have a passion towards tech, towards communications engineering, and towards software. Upon completing my bachelor's, I had the chance to do a two-month-long internship at NASA Ames Research Center in the US. This was a great experience and I got to learn a lot. I worked on a web app that relays geospatial data on a globe. One of the things that I learned there actually is that even though I really love to code, I don't enjoy doing web development. Still, I'm really glad that I got to try it because I think it's very difficult to find out what you like until you try a bunch of stuff that you don't like. Um, another thing that I learned is just how important it is to apply to any position that you find interesting. Whether you think that the competition is going to be very high and your chances of getting it are very low, still doing your absolute best at the application and you know, you never know, you might end up getting it. So. That's, that's a major thing that I learned. Then directly after the internship, I came to Finland, dragging two impossibly heavy suitcases and knowing absolutely no one here. I came to study at Aalto University, a master's of communications engineering. So you might be wondering why Finland? There's a lot of reasons, but three of the major ones. First was that I was aware of Finland's very high reputation when it came to the education system. Uh, and Aalto University in particular and its high rankings. And the second reason is that it was still free to study as an international student, which meant that I could afford moving here. And then three, um, I was really excited to be back in the Nordics because I really ex enjoyed doing an exchange semester in Uppsala University in Sweden previously. In the end, it was truly a very great experience to study at Aalto. Before my first summer at Alto, I applied to a position that I had found um, to be a summer trainee at Nokia Bell Labs. I was accepted and I got to spend my summer there learning a huge amount of things. Um, I got to work on a MATLAB link level, link level simulation um, in order to study user plane connectivity in the 5G non-standalone deployment. With the great help of my mentor from Nokia at the time, um, I was able to write a paper and get it published in an IEEE conference. This was truly an invaluable um, experience, especially that I was a student at that time. I got to learn so much about, well, 4G and 5G, but also about work life, about research, simulations, and just got this wealth of real experience and knowledge. I was then back to Alto again for a semester, and then when it was time to do my thesis, I applied again to do it at Nokia Bell Labs. I was again accepted and I got to do it on 5G ultra-reliable low latency communication. It was the same story again, lots of learning and also ended up uh, with a paper. So near the end of my thesis, I heard about open positions in this 5G layer one software team. I heard this through um, some of my colleagues. And I'll tell you a little bit later about what this 
L1 software means, so we'll talk about that. But anyway, I still remember that I was um, going to the office one day and still hanging my jacket when the hiring manager found me. And he asked, are you Farah? I said yes. And then he asked if I would like to have an interview in two hours. So it was a very fast process, um, but still I found that this position sounded great and they thought that I would be a good fit. So long story short, I worked there um, for as a 5G layer 1 software engineer for about two and a half years on two Nokia products using primarily C, but then also C++. Quite recently, only four months ago, I started my new current position as a line manager still in the same team. This has always been a very interesting possibility for me because I've always been equally passionate about people as I am about the technical work. So I knew that one day, if possible, I would really like to do both. I, th I thought that that day would be further down the line, um, so when the position opened up in my team, I actually didn't apply. Then my manager uh, approached me and asked if I would be interested in applying. So I thought about it and we had a series of very open conversations about my aspirations and my concerns. In the end, I decided to apply and I was accepted. So you've heard me mention layer one software or L1 software a bunch of times. So let me tell you what that means. So what, what is it that we do in our team? Um, basically, we are em developing embedded software which, together with the hardware, makes up the layer one, or physical layer, part of the 5G signal processing chain. Um, we are responsible for Nokia's 4G and 5G baseband products, and these are the products that go directly to our customers, who are primarily the telecom providers, who use them in order to serve millions around the world with 4G and 5G networks. Now, layer one is a particularly important uh, area because when you send a signal over the air, it's very prone to errors, unlike, for example, using cable. Um, the signal gets distorted based on a number of things, and depending on the speed of the user, the distance, even the weather conditions could affect. Still, we want to make sure that the data arrives correctly. In order to do that, there's a series of encoding, decoding, and other signal processing techniques that we can use. So we call the software that does all of those techniques the layer one software. This is quite different from, for example, application software, particularly because we really need to squeeze out the last cycle um, of the algorithms in order to make sure that we can serve as many users, um, have as many cells, high data rates, and as low power consumption as possible. We also have to satisfy hard real-time processing requirements. So, we're a very large team at Nokia, spreading across multiple different co uh, countries, across different continents. There's always a chance to learn new things, get involved with different stuff, and really grow and expand. Um, we come from different backgrounds and we work on different things. So for example, there's a bunch of us who come from a pure software engineering coding background. Others come from deep 4G, 5G telecom backgrounds. Some specialize in optimization work and others are writing our test software. Um, others still are using Python in order to um, do our continuous integration, DevOps, platform services. Um, there's truly a supportive environment, in my opinion, at Nokia, uh, where you're encouraged to be open, fearless, and empowered. Um, for example, I've always noticed that it's truly understood that juniors are juniors. You're not um, rushed and pressured so, to start um, contributing, but instead you're guided and supported so that you can truly become an expert. During my time at Nokia, I've tried my best to be a yes person when it comes to new opportunities, both technical and otherwise. 
All the while, keeping in mind that time is a limited resource and always prioritizing my own health and well-being. And I honestly always felt that that was understood and supported by peers and managers. Uh, what's great is that the more that I started to get involved in different things, the more that these new opportunities started to present themselves to me. I became fortunate enough to have a wide network of yes people who really care about the company and want to see it get better day after day. I got to grow my network via real human-to-human -human interactions and learn a lot on the way. When it comes down to it, I got quite lucky to enter the world of telecommunications, software, and specifically 5G. It feels really great to feel that the work that you're doing matters, that so many people around the world care about it, and that it's enabling revolutions in technology. In the end, our products are the collective result of the work of so many people, with each of us playing our small yet very important part in it. It also feels very good to be working for a company that's con constantly recognized as one of the most ethical companies in the world. To know that the hours that I put in are going towards the success of a company that believes in our moral obligation as human beings. I've also truly always felt respected, trusted and valued at Nokia. If I had to give some advice based on my very humble experience, I would say be very open to opportunities, try many different things, and exhibit genuine care for the work that you do. Be kind and helpful, and be always very mindful of your own health and well-being. So to conclude, I did not know what I wanted to be when I was younger. Um, in fact, I don't even think that this is the only field that I would enjoy and be passionate about. But I do think that tech and software provide some kind of unique satisfaction. I'm really glad that I got on this path, even though I had no idea where it would lead. And I'm very grateful for the people who have supported me along the way. So my point is, if you have any interest in these fields, do try them out. You might be surprised that the more that you try, and the more that you learn, the more that you have a passion towards them. So be confident and bet on yourselves, whether that's studying a new technical topic, or applying for a job at a big multinational company, or submitting your CV for a position where you don't meet all of the requirements. To be honest, no one ever does meet them all, so please don't let that stop you. Thank you very much for being here and listening to me today. I'll be hopefully joining the virtual stand between 4 and 4.30. You can find that under partners. So come chat with me if you have any questions. And of course, you can send me any questions on LinkedIn at any time. Um, I wish you all the very best on your own journeys. And thank you very much.